the first one is the cap the cap you know just like the head it is the most top part in uh, of a human body when somebody wears a cap right so the edge of the pterygium this is the cap the main part from the cap to the surface of the cornea this is called as the head of the pterygium you imagine a human body a cap it's at the top after that comes the head after that comes the body just imagine that so you have a cap you have a head and you have a body of the pterygium so this is how at parts of the pterygium are being described so remember i was telling you that the pterygium is more common in the nasal part right in fact i gave you four reasons why it's more common in the nasal part but that does not mean that the pterygium cannot happen in the temporal part what we meant was it is extremely more common to be present in the nasal part but see this eye here we have a nasal pterygium of the same eye and a temporal pterygium in the same eye so we call it as a double monocular it happens in one eye it is a double pterygium and that is why we call it as a double monocular and we now come back to what is called as the stalker's line let me go back by just showing you a mention of the stalker's line here you just see this part there is a pigmentation here near the head of the pterygium some just adjacent to the cap of the pterygium you see pigmentation here and you see a pigmentation here so this pigmentation is called as stalker's line which is just adjacent to the advancing edge or the cap of the pterygium that pigmentation is called as the stalker's line now let us see it in increased magnification here you can see that the pigmentation uh, is present here in fact in higher magnification you can see this pigmented part very 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 clearly seen typical of stalker's line uh, in a case of pterygium when you are going to present that the stalker's line is there the examiner is going to ask you what are the other pigment lines you know so usually you have to be prepared for such kind of deviations in the exam when you are presenting one line or when you are presenting one pigment suddenly the examiner would want to know what are the allied things associated with it so if that question is asked let us just go back once again and say stalker's line which is seen at the advancing edge of the head of the pterygium there is a hudson stalys line a palpebral area in old age or this is age related without any pathology it can happen in older people there is a ferris line which is happens at the uh, iris pigment uh, the iron pigmentation at the border of the filtering bleb and the flesher's ring surrounding the cone in keratoconus so these are the four pigmentations you need to know when a question is being asked when you are presenting uh, a stalker's line so stalker's line hudson stalys line ferris line and a flesher's ring we talked about the stalker's line that was one clinical sign the second thing is you have to understand there is something called a fuchs patches so these are fuchs patches you can see this isolated islands like this you see these are something which are some detached from the cap of the pterygium this is not continuous with the cap of pterygium in fact they are described as minute gray blemishes near the head of the pterygium this is something like a satellite lesion you know it is not actually connected with the pterygium proper so those are these things which can uh, which is called as the fuchs patches so we talked about double monocular pterygium we said in one eye the nasal part and the temporal part you can have pterygium so we call it as a double monocular now you can have a bilateral pterygium right a pterygium can happen in the nasal side of both the eyes of both the right eye and the left eye so this is different a double monocular is different so you have to understand when you describe in your exam you should know whether you are talking about a double monocular or a bilateral nasal pterygium this is a typical case of a bilateral nasal pterygium and then we'll also see some other variants in the morphology of pterygium here you see that it is a nasal pterygium but you are seeing two heads right this is one head and this is another head so you can have a single pterygium only in the nasal side 
it can have two heads. So, you have to when you are exercising, you need to be cognizant of that fact and plan your surgical strategies according to it. So, these are the normal variants which can happen. Uh, they are pretty rare, but it is uh, nice that you know about it and if you see it, you describe it in the exams that can fetch you uh, higher marks uh, for your presentation. So, we just talked about the presentations of the pterygium, but then certain morphological changes can happen within that pterygium. One such thing is this, that is a pterygium, a tissue can swell and we call it as a cyst. You know, any swelling, you call it as a cyst and so you can have a cystic pterygium. A pterygium can remain quiet for years and then suddenly swell up. We also said in the pathology section, we said there is some accumulation of inflammatory cells. So, sometimes that can produce due to inflammation or just plain degeneration, there can be accumulation of fluid where you can have a degenerative cyst. So, we talked about nasal pterygium, we talked about double monocular pterygium, we talked about bilateral pterygium, we talked about pterygium with two heads, we talked about pterygium with cystic changes. Now, I am going to talk to you about another condition here. Pterygium can coexist with a malignant condition or a pre-malignant condition called an OSSN, ocular squamous uh, surface neoplasia. So, here you can see there is a pterygium here, but more importantly, this is a temporal pterygium and here you have the OSSN lesion. Now, here in this condition, OSSN could have been the first thing to occur and this temporal pterygium can be a sympathetic reaction to this. Remember, we also talked about the etiology. When we talked about etiology, we said there is a chance that human papilloma virus can cause pterygium. In this condition, you know that human papilloma virus can cause precancerous condition. So, both of them may be interlinked. So, this is also a possibility that a pterygium can coexist with OSSN. So, when we see a pterygium, usually we think that the larger the size of the pterygium, the higher the chance of astigmatism. Now, that is true for majority of instances. In fact, many, many clinical studies like this have clearly indicated that the pterygium size corresponds to corneal astigmatism. But this is not necessarily true every time. Let me show you some clinical uh, deviants which we have seen in our practice here. So, here you see this is a very, very mild pterygium. See, it just does not look like a, a thick pterygium. It just looks like an atrophic pterygium. Even when the patient moves temporarily, uh, the pterygium is not very fleshy. But see the astigmatism it has created. Almost up till 49, almost up till 50 diopters. It is really causing compression. So, the one thing you need to understand is, even though it is true that in a majority of instances, a thicker pterygium means a higher corneal astigmatism. This is not necessarily true all the time. Here we saw an atrophic looking pterygium causing a significant astigmatism. See this condition. You will agree with me that the pterygium here was lot fleshier than the pterygium which I showed in the slide before. See when the patient is moving, see how much the astigmatism is uh, looking to be created. It looks as if the pterygium is pulling on into the cornea. So, this is the topography of the same patient. Very difficult to believe, right? See, you will agree with me that this pterygium is lot fleshier than the previous part, but see the topography here. It is all green. So, this pterygium, you will agree, it looks much more thicker than the pterygium which I showed uh, in the last uh, slide. So, here just because it is looking thick, you should not assume that it is causing significant astigmatism and when in doubt, the only way to look at it is the refractive astigmatism and which can be confirmed with the topography. <music>